What do you do when the social media platforms that you've been using for months or even years to build your fan base up just magically disappear without warning? Well, in the past 48 hours, that's exactly what happened when Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp stopped working. I'm not talking about for a few minutes, I'm not talking about for an hour or two. They were all down for around six hours, which had a lot of people freaking out. And even though they're back up and social media life is back to normal, this should be a wake up call for every single one of you guys. Now, before you say I'm being dramatic, hear me out. I know some of you guys right now are like, Adam, bro, it isn't that serious, man. Don't you reel me in with a clickbait video. And I can assure you this video is not clickbait, but what if they didn't come back? Or more realistically, what happens if you wake up and your account was hacked or even worse, deactivated or deleted overnight? You sit there trying over and over again to log in, getting that username not found message. What then? Where do you go? How do you keep moving forward when you're stopped in your tracks? So what do we do? Do we run back to MySpace thinking that this was a sign that we've been waiting for? Time to get that top eight back in order. Am I right? Well, I'm Adam Ivey and I'm here to answer those questions. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take control of the traffic that you receive with magnetic music marketing, then build out a bulletproof social ecosystem that'll continue to grow even when those platforms go down. More importantly, I'll show you how you could take ownership of your audience rather than renting their attention on a platform that you have zero control of. And don't worry, I'll show you actual examples of this later uh, for artists and producers, so sit tight. So before I get ahead of myself, I think it's important that I break down what I mean by renting attention. See, all these social platforms that we use lure us in with an experience that is unique to their platform. Sure, there's obviously crossover with similar features here and there, but overall, we all know our personal user experience on Twitter is different from TikTok, is different from YouTube, is different from Instagram, and so on. Now, all these platforms are free, well, kind of, right? We could sign up for free, we could promote for free, build a following for free, but in return, they make loads of money with ads and promotional tools that they offer to businesses and creators. The more eyeballs that are on a platform, the more money they make. And if you ask me, I'm totally fine with that. I understand that it's a business, but I also want to stress the fact that we're all just renting a room in their gated community. We're not the landlords, right? If we come home from running errands and they change the locks while we're gone, there's not a whole lot we can do. And even if there is, it might take a very long time to get someone to let us back in. It always blows my mind when something goes wrong, it doesn't work, and people turn to another social platform to complain. They don't care. At the end of the day, they owe us nothing. This is where the beautiful problem of renting attention comes into play. If everyone you know and connect with is just renting a room in the same gated community like we are, what happens when you can't get past the gate anymore? We have to build the ecosystem of vacation rentals while building our dream home that no one can lock us out of. So what the hell am I talking about and how did this turn into a real estate video? Well, let me show you exactly visually what I'm talking about. So right here in the middle is our dream house. This is our safe place. Our dream home consists of our personal website, our email list, and all of our real life contacts such as phone numbers and addresses. This is where people can find us and we can find them. Now surrounding our dream house would be all of our vacation rentals. These are social platforms that we choose to focus on and every one of these should be uh, providing your guests with a different experience. Imagine one vacation rental is located in the mountains of the Swiss Alps and another one is on the beach in Hawaii. The third vacation rental is on a quiet lake somewhere in the middle of the woods and our last vacation rental is smack dab in the middle of uh, a booming city. This is how we should be looking at our social media accounts and how they interact with one another. If you were visiting with guests in one of your vacation rentals, you would probably talk about your experiences at one of the other locations, which would make them want to experience that for themselves. So when you invite them to come over and visit, it would be a no brainer for them to take you up on the offer. If all of your vacation rentals are in the same spot, the same place, in the same stretch of location, you're telling them, hey, come check this out. Oh, is it the same setup? Yeah, it's the same setup then why would they wanna follow you there? Give them unique experiences. We have to build out an ecosystem that takes our audience from one place to another while providing them with different experiences that all travel back to the central hub. This is how one person can become a fan on uh, multiple different platforms and they'll connect with you on multiple platforms while also inviting you into their world by providing a direct link to them via email. This is the ultimate digital handshake. By doing this, we build out a connection path that is so strong that even if one, two, or three platforms vanished overnight, you'd still have access to your audience. On Monday, I uploaded a new video on my channel. And then about 10 minutes after I uploaded it live and it went, um, I put it on Instagram, it was on YouTube, but once it went live, Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp all went down. No problem. 
I sent an email out to my list. I'll put a pop-up on the screen right now. And I let them know that it went live. In under an hour, I actually had tons of responses from real people who were happy to hear from me. Now, I go over all of this and I go into like really deep detail when it comes to structuring a bulletproof ecosystem as well as building a powerful email list in my upcoming Sell Music Masterclass 3.0. But I'm about to share a couple ecosystems that you could start putting together right now that will get you results. The first ecosystem I'll run through is for music producers and beat makers. Now, if you're a singer songwriter or have a band, you could skip ahead, but you might miss out on some gems. So uh, if you're a music producer, it's really easy to build an ecosystem from Instagram to TikTok to YouTube to mailing list and here's how. You ready? Let's do this. So on YouTube, you're gonna post a beat making video showing the creation process on how you created a beat or an instrumental. From there, you can invite rappers or singers to join you on TikTok to perform their best material over the instrumental you created in a contest type environment. You shoot this content all at the same time, guys, so it's not a crazy workload. Now on TikTok, you announce the contest or the challenge and you tell your audience that you're gonna be doing live submission reviews and announcing the winner on Instagram. You could set up a landing page for the contest within an email service provider such as MailChimp and explain on Instagram how they could sign up to enter the contest uh, at the domain name that you set up that sends them to the landing page. You could do that very quickly. Uh, then as supporting content, you can promote the various aspects of the contest within your ecosystem that then provides them more updates and email form uh, that includes specific lists of things that can do uh, and a call to action that loops them back over to the video that you originally made on YouTube, right? Now, if you're all new to this, that might seem very confusing, but I promise that everything I just explained could easily be put into play in a single day, if not a single hour. Uh, and the beautiful thing about building these ecosystems is that we can jump into these ideas quickly and build on multiple different platforms at the same time, one feeding another, feeding another, uh, all providing different experiences for our audience along the way. Okay, so let me break down an ecosystem for all my singer songwriters and bands out there. A very straightforward ecosystem that you can create around a new release could look something like this. Follow me. You share lyrics on Twitter and then give them a call to action to watch a making of or behind the scenes video, including said lyrics over on Instagram or TikTok. Now on Instagram or TikTok, you post that short video clip of you either performing, recording those lyrics, or maybe the lyrics are just playing in the background at that particular point in the song with a visual that matches the vibe of the record. In that video, you uh, post a caption or even in the video itself, you have a hook uh, that intrigues people such as, the song that almost never happened. Hear the full story over on YouTube, which obviously every song uh, has a different background and a different hook. So each hook would be different, but then providing that making of or behind the scenes uh, content, right? The, what do they call it? Like behind the lyrics type videos would provide longer form content for your audience to consume. Within that video, you can then announce that you're giving early access to the full length music video or doing a limited edition merch drop that's only available for those that are in your email community. That call to action then sends them to a landing page where they'll be able to enter their email and you'll be able to collect their email. With that being said, these are two examples that you can take influence from and massage into place to suit your own voice and audience. Keep in mind that building an email list takes some time and not every ecosystem will have to be full circle. Sometimes our audience flow might just be from one platform to another, which is fine, but it's important um, here to understand that you have to have the balanced fan base that you can continue to connect with at any time, even if one of your favorite social platforms goes down. We want to take ownership of our career, which means we need to take ownership of our fan base. Now, if you've enjoyed these breakdowns and have found value in this video, then I have some great news. In my upcoming Sell Music Masterclass 3.0, I'll be giving away my most guarded secrets, tips, strategies, techniques, and every other buzzword I can jam into this video. It's my step-by-step -step system, people. Registration is going to be open to the public on October 11th. And as I've been saying, the Sell Music Masterclass 3.0 is an absolute monster. 3.0 is completely reinvented and amplified to a level never before seen. It contains everything that I've ever learned about magnetic music marketing and the systems I've developed around it. I'm gonna take you in, I'm gonna show you the step-by-step, -step, start to finish system and show you the entire game plan. This is not something you're gonna to wanna to miss, so you're definitely gonna to wanna to check that video out. Now, if you haven't yet, sign up for the early bird waiting list so you can have access to that registration page a day before it goes live to the public. All you have to do is click the link under this video somewhere on the screen, your name and your email, it's all you need, and you're gonna be first in line to get in when registration opens. 3.0. It's gonna be a game changer for a lot of you guys. And I'm looking forward to sharing those experiences with you. Now, hopefully you found value in this video. If you have, let me know in the comments, do the thumbs up and all that good stuff. I can't wait to share the next video with you.